This is Jim Martell. He's a hunter from Idaho, and in 2006, he paid almost $50,000 for a license to hunt polar bears. He partnered up with his guide Kuptana from Saks Harbor, and the two went to the Northwest Territories in Canada. Jim saw a polar bear. Jim shot a polar bear, but upon close inspection, they realized it was a different animal than they had ever seen before. How is this possible? Where did it come from? Don't swipe or click away, because here's why hybrid animals may take over the North. The bear killed by the hunter had brown spots in its fur and a shallow face, long claws, and a humped back. If this wasn't a polar bear, what was it then? A grizzly bear? If so, the man would have been fined a hefty sum of money, and even be facing jail time. Upon DNA testing, they uncovered a shocking revelation. The bear Jim Martell killed was actually a polar bear, but also a grizzly bear, basically an offspring of both. Scientists would call it a hybrid, but how is that possible? Aren't grizzlies and polar bears two separate species that diverged four to five million years ago? Like, these aren't minor differences in the two animals. Sure, they're both bears, but they're as different from one another as a cat and a lion. They have different habitats, they live in different areas of the world, they hunt different prey, they mate differently, their bodies are different. But their reproductive systems, at least, are still rather similar. Why? Because polar bears and grizzlies actually did not diverge 4 million years ago, but only 500,000 years ago. In evolutionary terms, this is nothing. And it's the first hint that an interspecies relation between both bears could be possible. So, is this a definitive explanation as to how a grizzly bear and a polar bear managed to mate and produce offspring? Naturally? It's not the definitive explanation, but it is one of the explanations, and a damn good one at that. Now, you might be still scratching your head as to how a polar bear and a grizzly bear came into contact. After all, polar bears live in the Arctic and grizzly bears can be found all over Canada and the USA. The hunter in the beginning of the video found the polar grizzly hybrid in the north of Canada. This should mean that we're working with two species of bears living in Canada, but still, it's not like they share a habitat, do they? Well, they didn't, until global warming happened. With climate change, the melting of the ice caps has pushed the polar bear population down south. The exact opposite has been happening to the grizzly bear territory. As temperatures have become milder and human urbanization in the south increased, the grizzlies actually moved further north. Eventually, these two species met somewhere in the middle. Now, if they were so lucky as to meet in the springtime, it's possible that they took part in some hanky-panky and presto tango, you got a growler bear. However, let's not glance over the very serious problem of global warming, which seems to be the answer to the question why hybrid animals may take over the north. You see, as the ice is thinning and melting, the hunting grounds of polar bears are decreasing. If they can't feed on blubber, which is high in calories, they'll have to resort to eating seabird eggs and caribou. Problem solved, right? Not quite. You see, the amount of calories a polar bear would burn for foraging and hunting their new foods for which they were forced to adapt is equal to or less than the number of calories the polar bear would actually gain from eating them. That would be like you have to do 10 push-ups to eat one almond. Now, the reason we're calling this new animal a growler bear is that the name sounds better. However, some people also call it a pizzly bear. The real terminology actually has to do with the animal's parents. You see, if the father is a polar bear and the mother is a grizzly, then the cub would be called a pizzly. If the opposite is true, meaning the father is a grizzly and the mother is a polar bear, then the cub will be a growler bear. However, there's even a third option. The Inuit word for polar and grizzly hybrid is nanulak. On second thought, scratch growler bear. From now on, nanulak is our favorite term. Anyways, back to the hybrids. Even though the thinning of the Arctic ice is a worrisome phenomenon, we still need to be aware that this might be the polar bear's adaptation mechanism. For years, polar bears have been adapting to the harshest climate in the world. They've been living in a place where no one else could ever possibly survive. Over millennia, they've been breeding with other bears and managed to preserve the species. So maybe the new growler bears, or pardon, nanolacs, are probably an adaptation mechanism to preserve the species. And if that is true, then this means we'll be seeing more and more nanolacs and fewer and fewer polar bears and grizzlies. Studies and observations of the animals while in captivity show that the nanolacs are fertile. They can mate and carry offspring just like their parents could. So, in a way, you could say that they'll be invading the North Pole in the coming years. However, it might not be with ships, missiles, and guns, but pure interspecies relationships. And this mingling might even prove advantageous. 
According to Larissa DeSantis, a female paleontologist at the University of Tennessee, polar bears have longer skulls, which makes them experts at grabbing seals out of the sea. But their molars are smaller than is typical for their body size because all they eat is blubber all day. Grizzlies, on the other hand, can eat whatever they want. We don't know yet, but perhaps the intermediate skull of the pizzly could confer a biomechanical advantage. And all of these adaptations and a wider menu of foods available are probably why the number of crawler bear sightings has been growing exponentially. In fact, in one study from 2016 in the Biology Letters Journal, scientists said that the increase in the population of nanolacs is the same as the decline of the population of polar bears. If this trend continues, over the next 30 years, we'll see a decrease of 30% in the global polar bear population. This, in turn, means that the nanolac population will increase manifold, and best explains why we've been seeing more of them in the wild recently. Larissa also noted, usually hybrids aren't better suited to their environments than their parents, but there's a possibility that these hybrids might be able to forage for a broader range of food sources. Mixing in with a grizzly bear could hence be the saving grace for polar bears as a species, potentially giving them the necessary adaptations to survive further south from the North Pole than they are used to. Generalist animals like coyotes and cougars can adapt to fast changes, but when it comes to highly specialized apex predators like the polar bear, they are very slow to adapt to changes and usually perish before doing so. Since we're on the subject of hybrid animals that are taking over the north, we need to look at two other examples. The first one is the hybrid between the bowhead whale and the North Pacific right whale. This hybridization has drastically reduced the number of right whales in the world, but since their environment was changing, the habitats overlapped and naturally hybrids were born. Scientists predict the hybridization of 22 other mammal species of the Arctic habitat starts overlapping with others, among which are the Nerluga whales. These whales are actually the offspring of a narwhal and a beluga whale. When the female narwhal, a creature so unique, it could be called the unicorn of the sea, and the male beluga whale mate, the resulting animal is a narluga. Sadly, this creature doesn't have the single horn that one of his parents does. The narluga was first discovered in 1990 when Mads Peter Hyde Jorgensen discovered a skull he thought belonged to a beluga. Upon closer inspection, he realized that this animal had spiral teeth just like a narwhal. However, the narwhal tooth we all call a horn seemed to be missing. This led Mads Peter to believe he discovered a new species of animal, and he was right, it was a narluga. The shape of their jaw is probably why narlugas don't feed on fish, octopus, and shrimp like their parents do. The narlugas actually spend the majority of their time at the seabed looking for other food sources. Changing from one food source to another could play a vital role in the preservation of the northern whale as a species. This is analogous to our famous bear example. We already said that the grizzly bears have claws and are omnivorous. Using a special hunting technique, the grizzlies can eat insects, plants, roots, grasses, berries, tubers, fish, rodents, and many other meat sources. The grizzly bear is a generalist animal, just like the coyote, which allows them to change and adapt to their environment rather quickly. And the poter did something very smart. By crossbreeding with the grizzly and creating a grodler bear, the offspring can find food with ease. If they can adapt to the change in temperature, the Nanulax will be the kings of the north, possibly sharing the throne with the Nardugas. If you enjoyed this video, you'll like the next one. This is Koala with quality content. See you soon.